So Gordon, you are the Arts Coordinator for Celebration Earth. You're bringing arts into this equation with faith groups and, and the environment. And this whole idea of story as well, that's how you're really bringing people in. You've got this incredible story about the ash trees and the loss of the ash trees and how that's touching so many different people in different ways. And there are lots of ways of telling that story, but your way is through the arts. And I just think that's, that, that would touch me, that, that, would, that would pull on my emotions, that would bring me into the equation. The Buxton Ash Project, within the story there, all the science is there. It's there tucked away. It turns up in the poems when we hear the ash trees talking about how they dread the wind that brings a long, slow death that they can feel. You know, the, the science has informed the art and it means that the project grows with a strong root. It's, it's rooted in an understanding of the woods and of the individual trees where this is happening, but it speaks to people's hearts. And because these are the trees where people ran, where people played, these are the trees that people climbed, where they built nest boxes, the trees they fell out of. All those things are there, all those personal experiences of these woods. So can we watch that film now? Can I just experience those puppets and uh, that storytelling through that, that art form? Come, come with wolf howl and raven break to the sailing clouds. Come with a knife-edge scream, the sword thrust of swifts, an echo of buzzards. Come with the gale along the ridge galloping, come with a wind throw of rooks and a solitude of ravens. Come by Axe Edge and Pillsbury, by Beggar's Bridge and Crowdy Coat, by Wolfscote Dale and Raven's Tor. Come, the hills are waiting. For us, stillness is important. To simply stop, to relax and let go of the worries of the day. And sitting somewhere like this, to simply breathe and let the place around us fill us. Let the wind blow through us. Let the stone beneath us and the grass around us be who we are. That's what we look for in our stillness. <laughs> Describing people as disconnected is a very common thing, but I know the people I work with value the experiences they get Without imagination, without an imaginative connection to the world around them, then we really are lost. There are secret animals hidden in all of them. In bumblebee nests and ladybirds and yeah. And because they're made up of so many different pieces, they become ecosystems themselves. That you can find all the elements of a wood in the bodies of the puppets. I meet spirits. I meet the voices and the essences of places. We are the trees, where the owls nest, where the bats fly. Where I'm Scottish. We grow up with fairy stories. And for me, a lot of those fairy story characters are the ones that come walking out of the world and sit down next to me. We are the trees who shed slim grey dresses for coats of green and brown and lichen, who comb the air, who dance in the wind, who grow hope from seedlings. Our work is about emotional intelligence, about understanding how you feel, about why all these things matter to you, and finding ways of expressing that and being creative with it. And so in places like this, 
It's more the sense of a presence, the sense of a story waiting to be told. When we're doing projects like this and we're working with groups of people, it's that sense of community that becomes really important. The sense of us all helping. So it becomes a project about community engagement and participation and the sense of people belonging to a group. I have no idea what was happening by the end. No, it's like, a, um, like an old kind of court dance. As people walked past, Oh. They just seemed enchanted. They were, yeah. they were looking up, they looked a bit awestruck. And that's different than going for a walk with your dogs in the woods. It's making people stop for yeah. a minute and just maybe look in a slightly different way. So you actually stop and notice what's around you and that connects you to nature and that makes you feel a bit more responsible. What we find if you do creative activities with people, let's say they've been writing poems, they never need to share them at the end of it but they will almost always want to. All right, shall we do the poem? Let's do the We Are The People one. Okay? All right. We are the people who made the nest boxes. Who walked the dogs. Who fetched the sticks. Who rescued the cat. We are the people who made the swings. Who built tree houses. Who fought with sticks. Who made the bows. We go almost to the beginnings of people and ask them to feel for themselves and find out and understand for themselves what matters to them and to act upon that. And it might be that we are just one little pebble rolling down a hill and we're not going to make any difference anywhere. But I'd rather be helping anyone I can to find their own new connections with the earth than just giving up and not trying at all. We are the people who walked, who wondered, who laughed, who talked, who held hands, who strolled, who, who held, held their hearts and loves and hopes under, under ash trees. We are the trees holding on to hope in seeds and seedlings and in breaths held and hearts clenched against the dread. We are the trees. <laughs> that really spoke to me in a way that so many other environmental messages don't touch our hearts enough mm -hmm. they don't speak to us it's just fact it's just something black and white it's something um that i feel very uh disconnected to mm -hmm. um but that that drew me in in a way where um I just felt very emotionally involved in that project somehow. And I think that's what you're bringing, what the arts are bringing to this whole project is this emotional connection, which is so important and so powerful. I think you're right. And thank you for those lovely comments. Um, that's what we try and do. And I think that, that has to be there, that all we can ever do is try. Um, but for a project like that, it drew so many things together and what, whatever is there 
is there because, well, not just those people, but all sorts of other people contributed. If it had just been me as an artist making those puppets, they wouldn't have looked like that. And for me, that's the excitement of it and the challenge of it is to find ways of bringing all those voices together and respecting them and using them. And puppets like those will now go back out into the community as soon as we get the chance to. And if you like, those stories will go on being told and being shared. And given the town where all that happened, there are beautiful parks where there will be more events when we can do events, so hopefully quite soon. And there the puppets can come back out and they might get new voices. We might have new people seeing different things in them or wanting to give them new missions to share. But it is, it's that way of telling stories and telling stories that quietly bring in the science. Um, if, you're, if you're doing a project like that, like that with a faith group, the faith would be there as well. Um, but in a project like that, which is very broad based and brings people from all directions, it's, it's science and art and our town. And I think that's what makes them special, is that rootedness, is that sense of belonging to a place. Mm. And so those puppets could only have grown in those woods. Yeah. If we'd done it somewhere else, they would look completely different. And for me, that local distinctiveness, that really special, that's, yeah, that specialness that comes out of a particular place mm. is wonderful. I think also watching that, it really confirms that arts are not that sort of fluffy thing that, you know, we feel mm. like we ought to do because it looks good or it sounds yeah. good. At all, it's the power that uh, it ha the arts have to speak to people through emotion. Um, mm. And I think from an environmental point of view, I think that's something we can really learn. It's actually the value of, of the different arts in conservation, in the environmental mm. movement. I think maybe that's something we haven't really acknowledged so much um, and definitely a way forward is uh, mm. in, and involving those communities, those communities who are really linked, are really connected with their, their, um, their environment, their local, their local patch um, and, and using them to tell these stories through art. It's a wonderful project. And because the, the stories that we meet in the environmental movement are so strong, mm. you know, those messages and those dramas are very impassioned. Yeah, and they do speak to people, but we need to find a new language to do the speaking um, and to tell the stories. And that's where the arts can come in. The challenge for organisations like, like an environmental organisation who wanted to work with artists is that an effective project, an effective engaged project that brings local people in has to have an open end. You can't say, you are going to produce X or Y or Z. The creativity has to belong to the people who are doing the project. So it can go off in unexpected directions, but it's more about the emotional integrity of the story that they're exploring and their understanding of it and where it goes. And hopefully that's what is com communicated afterwards. And that might be the lesson that uh, an organisation can learn that says, actually, what is really mattering to people is this. And maybe that's what we need to turn our attention to and what we need to reach out through. If you're bringing arts into this equation with faith groups and and the environment, what sort of arts are, are being involved? Well, we have been trying to find artists who will work with groups, who will engage with some of those faith groups and some of those environment groups. And we've got people who've been creating performance poetry on Orkney. We've got poets working with groups in other parts of the country. Uh, we've been supporting Sangeeta and the Durga Opera uh, so we've been exploring lots of different art forms and finding ways of using them to investigate and, e and express that relationship between people, faith and nature. It's the way that the arts speak to people um, in so many different ways, whether you're listening to a piece of music or whether you're uh, listening to performance poetry or you're looking at a, a sculpture or a performance. Um, it's the 
the, the power, the way of reaching people in a, in a different way, in a more emotional way, that is, is why this, this is working so well. And, and also maybe that sense of urgency um, of, of, of why it's important now and, and that sense of sort of doing something right now at this moment in time. Yes, because, I mean, we feel that the arts speak to the heart. Yeah, effective arts engage the emotions and they drive through a lot of the waffle because they reach heart and soul. And within that sort of triple conversation between faith and nature and art, it's easy for art to be the painting at the end or the nice bit when art is actually much more central to that. Art is about communication. And what we are trying to do is either working with individual artists or working on engaged projects where we're putting artists in, in the middle of that relationship between a faith group and an environment group, that there our artists are helping people explore emotions, really start working out for themselves what they feel about an issue. And within that, our artists then give people tools to express that feeling. And often we find that with the expression, initially for yourself, comes the desire to share. Mm -hmm. And so we get communication. So our artists become vehicles for communicating the emotions of a, the story that a project is exploring. And as soon as we've got that, we start reaching out to people and it really reaches, well, it reaches out and then it reaches in. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it touches people's hearts and inspires them in a different way. And you asked about the urgency, and it is there. And we need to find different ways of telling those stories. We hear the science way, we hear the way of numbers and fear and despair. And often we hear the faith way. The faith way is often longer term, and it might call for a different perspective that isn't always appropriate for the people we're working with. And then the arts come in and hopefully use words or use music or use movement. They use creativity that offers a third way, a third way of reaching that emotional place in yourself that says, this is important, this needs action, and this needs action now. So that's what we are looking for. Why are the arts helping in sort of pushing things onwards? now, what, how can they help in a sense of urgency? I think we're back to telling stories and telling stories dramatically and engagingly and really stopping people and getting them to look and listen. And that's where we need to be matching the wildness of creativity with the backup information, the, well, this is what we're trying to do. The arts might be telling us what's happening, perhaps why we're trying to do it, hopefully a vision of the future, what, might, what will come out of this, but that then needs the, this is how we're trying to do it, can you help? Mm. And so it needs the both, no one of our three conversations can happen on their own. We need, the arts need that environmental base to make it real, to anchor it, to help plant the trees. Mm. I mean, Going so back we know what to we the, need to do, it's just empowering people and telling to, people yeah, what to do to, and giving them... And, the, and reaching out to more people perhaps and, and getting people to stop and join in. Because you can't ignore two four metre tall puppets walking down your high street. Um, it's a great way of getting everyone to stop because people have to ask and they have to find out what's going on and who are you and what's happening. I didn't know that was happening. Really, is that what's happening to our trees? And then there's almost always that next question is, oh, if that's happening to our trees, what can I do? Mm. And, and so it is, it's that telling the story dramatically, creatively, emotionally, and we need then to anchor it with action, with, well, this is what you can do. And it needs to be, not all practical, but it needs to be things that people can do. Ideally, a first thing that they could do within 24 hours, you know, to yeah. go away and find a seed and plant it. Yeah. And that's the important thing, isn't it? It's giving, giving the power back to the people to mm. feel like, yes, this is not a problem that I can't help with. I do have the power to actually yeah. change things. And especially working with other people in that community and then the wider faith community mm -hmm. as well, that we, do, we can actually make a difference. 
And again, the arts come back in there because there is that sense of this is what I'm doing. I'm trying. I, this is what I'm doing. And my neighbours are doing this or my friends are doing that. Is that to then have a space where people can feed those personal experiences back in. So with something like our puppets, in a year's time, we're hoping we'll be getting a new set of poems about the seeds people have planted and the new seedlings that are growing and what that means to people and what hopes they are embedding in that one little ash seedling in a pot in their backyard. Um, that the arts are giving that open space that says, tell us, tell us your story, share us your story. We'll build it into something, we'll build a book of all your tales, we'll film it, we'll do anything we can, but we'll give you the space to share your story and we will celebrate as a community and we'll celebrate what you, as one person, one family, one church, one whatever, are doing. And so we will recognise it and salute your efforts and we'll salute anyone and everyone who tries. And back to this idea of celebration as well, is, is that joy and wonder that we get from, as you say, planting yeah. a, a, an ash seed and watching that, that, that tree grow and, and knowing what it could be in the yeah. future as well. And maybe we lose track of that a little bit in our very complicated lives and maybe we need to get back to those basics, that joy, that wonder we Absolutely. get from nature. I mean, because for me, that comes right back round to what Celebration Earth is about. Because for me, it's a project rooted in hope, and joy, mm. and actually probably joy to begin with, that actually we live in an amazing world. Yes, we're doing appalling things to it, and there are all sorts of awful things happening, but it's just an absolutely stunning place. Um, and there's a hope that it's never too late to change. We can do things, people are doing things, and, and that combination of hope and joy mm. lies inside Celebration Earth and keeps that sense of celebration and change as as a possibility and as a very definite probability going and that felt like yeah, a full yeah, stop didn't it absolutely <laughs> beautiful full stop there